Right guys, so if you haven't watched last week's vlog, go check that out before even watching any of this because we are currently out in Spain testing the motorbikes, new Honda Fireblades that we're going to run at the Adaman TT. So yeah, basically last week's vlog was all about getting here, getting out, spinning the first laps on the bike, stuff like that. And I said in last week's that I was going to chuck in some technical stuff, so which, which doesn't normally happen on the first two days. So basically get used to riding the bike, do all the handlebars. Handlebars, handlebars, foot rests, all that seat position, all this sort of stuff that's just a little bit tedious and boring, but really important. So that's now out of the way, and we're now starting to work on the chassis, the electronics, anti wheelie, traction control, all this. While Crowe and Neil are currently stealing hats out of my van that are, hold on a second, that's the new one that you can have. You can have this. That's rubbish. If anybody else wants one of these, put in yeah, comments yeah, below. Here. Put that one on. That one doesn't fit your head. That one ain't fit your head. You can have either one, just take it out. Um, it's not my fault, your head's too big. Oh yeah, you look good now. Sorry, I got distracted. So this week's vlog is gonna be about uh, all these electronic aids and stuff that's on the bikes. And sometimes we don't always use them for the roads, but I just wanna have the understanding of percentages, how they all work, what they feel like all them things because that just all leads to more knowledge of the bike so that's the plan i've got some onboard footage as well which i'm going to chuck in we're currently at monte blanco so it'll be a few laps around monte blanco quite a good fast circuit plenty of wheel spin action and stuff i've got two different angles so yeah stay tuned for all of that and if neil's hat fits his head you'll get to see that Neil, your head's massive. It's on, look at it, it's on the biggest <laughs> setting. Turn around, turn around. It's, like a beastie, boy, <laughs> it's gonna let go. It looks like a beastie boy if it on. Oh my word. Come on. This is what I'm dealing with. This is who I'm trusting to work on my motorbike. Right, so before we start talking about the technical stuff, I'm just going to explain the, what the electronics actually are on the bike and how they work. So both Fireblades we have, both the Superbike and the Superstock bike, are running kit electronics. So that's HRC, kit loom, kit dash. But on the back of that, we've got a thing called a Motec logger, which is a piggyback logger. So as I've shown you before on my Supersport bike, that has a Motec dash, Motec logger, everything. This bike still has the standard Honda dash that comes on the Fireblade as a road bike. And then in the back, in here, we have the thing which is called the piggyback logger, so which is the logging system for all the pots, which are suspension pots, brake pressure, RPM, throttle position, all them things. So, therefore, when we look at all this information on the laptop, or well, when Roger looks at all this information on the laptop, all the channels and the layout of the laptop is completely the same. So, like Roger, when you're looking at when you're looking at the data now on your laptop, everything is completely the same as the 600. Yeah. Like as far as the layout of the pages, the layout is. Yeah, there's more stuff on here because obviously the 600 doesn't have traction control or wheeling control or launch or anything like that. Yeah. So, but it, it's the basic ones: wheel speeds, brakes, yeah. etc. Yeah, as I say. For that reason, you've set it up so then when you look at it, like the same channels, the same. So like, if you got your wheel speeds and everything at the top. Yeah. So throttle yeah, position. Yeah. Then... Throttle, brake pressure, etc. All yeah. my pages are laid out the same. <laughs> this is not a joke. Roger's actually colourblind. So he's got his laid out in, in specific colours so that he can see them. Obviously, it's no benefit to anyone else. The first sort of day or two uh, on the Superstock bike, we didn't do anything electronics wise because the, 
the most important thing is to figure out how the chassis works and what the chassis feels like and for starters I was really rusty especially on the first day. Now on the third day we've done a day, two days on the super stock bike and today we've spent on the super bike. Both bikes are exactly the same electronics, both bikes are on the same suspension, same shock but this bike has KTX super bike forks and Nissan brakes, that's the only difference on the chassis side of things. And now on the third day now like we finally started introducing some electronics. So first of all, we started off with the anti-wheeling on different levels, and we normally try and spread that out quite far. So say if it's a one to 10 thing, you'll give me one setting. I'll show you on the buttons. You'll give me one setting where I can have like hardly any anti-wheeling. And then on the other end of the scale, it will have loads and loads. So I find it easier to come in and say, oh, I feel like that's 40% or 60% better rather than not really be fit to feel it. On these buttons here on the side, so that's just up and down. When the dash is in the traction mode, you can go up and down on the traction while you're riding the bike. So I'll go out, keep the bike as was in the previous session, tire the same, everything the same, so it feels the same. He'll give me then starting in generating a little bit of traction and then have quite a lot on another channel. And then I'll come back in and go, right, I want it to be 30% more than the lower and 60 less than the high one, then he can work that out on his scale on the laptop and that's how it starts. For two sessions we spent doing that. Um, feel like we got it somewhere where I was like, yeah, it's not too much or too little. Excuse me. And then on the next session, we introduced some traction. So, and this highlighted something to us straight away, which is why we do it in this sort of order. When we then introduced some of the traction, that made the wheelie work worse because as I was coming out of the corner before, the bike was spinning and getting some momentum and, and still going, but once we introduced some traction, that was cutting the bike off, making the bike slower. So then when I actually got the bike more stood up, right, the bike was wheeling more with the same amount of wheelie that was good. And over some of the bumpier sections and stuff, it was upsetting the bike more. So this is why it's so important to do these things this way around, because you could have got on the bike with these two things turned on and then blame the chassis for doing them things. Now tomorrow, the plan is then to go back to the traction, take it off in a sense, till we figure out how much wheelie we want and try the whole system again, but starting with the traction instead of the anti-wheelie. So that's then the plan for, for tomorrow. I hope this doesn't sound like gibberish or too confusing, but if it does, there's another guy in our garage with a really good vlog and he explains everything properly. In because he is actually an engineer, a bike mechanic, everything. Whereas I'm just coming of it from the, the rider's point of view. But that's the plan now. So tomorrow for the first session or two, Roger's going to go through all the data now with the traction tables, uh, anti-wheelie tables, and see which way, because he can overlay the data, see which way it generates more spin or less spin out of the corner, gets more speed down the street, and base that off of which corners I've told him for feel. And then we're going to set out more uh, modes in the bike. Same thing, I'll go out, ride the bike, and he'll have one with quite a lot in, one with less in. And and we'll, it just keeps narrowing down the process, so that's the plan for tomorrow. Um, and then we'll hopefully go a bit faster. So when when you go through this now, so obviously I've told you what I like the feeling of traction ways, what I like the feeling of anti wheelie ways, and then we've talked about specific corners on the track map, and then you'll overlay lap by lap the data then to see which one <laughs> obviously looks more beneficial on the data, and then base your like your modes is what we're going to call it yeah yes yeah well what 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 settings we're going to put in each mode so what you can adjust when you're out on the bike yeah in terms of modes for the parameters that you've got so some will be fixed in modes and one will be able to leave you where you can adjust it yeah but I, I was that one what I was trying to explain to people is we probably won't use a lot of this on the roads but it's all a data data gathering operation to understand what the bike does when you do it exactly. so for when we come to actually doing it we're not guessing what yeah. two two clicks on this button does or yeah and yeah we've got an understanding of it and what we don't want to do is make it worse when it's on the roads when the wheels spend half the time off the floor yeah basically all this data we gather up if you go to the TT and you guess to do a setting for a lap we've got 30 Seven miles to get back around if it's the wrong thing. So, we, that's all we, we, yeah, we, it, this is what all this is about. And a lot of people go, oh, well, that's got no resemblance to the TT, and a lot of it doesn't. There's probably two corners on this track that do, and we've gained a lot of information out of that them two corners as far as the traction and anti wheelie goes, and what we think will will work and what won't work. And obviously, I've got a little bit of knowledge of riding around the TT, and Roger's got a hell of a bit of knowledge from from being there for about 50 
25 years. Yeah, that's how it works. Other teams and people probably do it different, but this is our system and it, it hasn't done us too bad so far. Yeah, so that he's got the tedious job now of sitting down and going through all the data this evening, making a plan for tomorrow, and uh, all I have to do is ride the bike and talk shit on this camera. Be good at that, to be fair. Credit where it's due. Not as good as Davy, though. No, Wavy Davy's a different we're, no, we're nowhere near as good as Davy. Davy, wave to the fans. I think that one's cracked, Neil. <laughs> got a bit of a dab on there, mate. What's going on, boys? He's putting a new chain on the superbike as well. Working, yeah? No. I just thought we'd take it off. And clean that. Yeah. Neil, you can't, sw you can't swear on this channel. <laughs> He's not that angry kid. Do you remember the cotton in character? Yeah, what, what, make of a, what makes this chain you're putting on? It's called a cock in this shaft. Neil, <laughs> stop swearing. <laughs> we need to tell the people what make the chain is. Pike chain. What's it called? You know the name of it. Stop being silly. Are we going to show them how we put this link in? No, don't even film it because it's not good. Why? Do you know what you're doing? No. What happens to the old chain? Could we put it on here if some of you wanted to buy it for as a souvenir? No, I'm selling it. What, what do you mean you're selling? Can I just take it home? You don't get paid or not? Passes, uh, we need to... What do you ten want? 10 mil tea bar and the formal allen cake. Your nose looks good, Neil, when I zoom in this nose. <laughs> <laughs> fucking wearing a What's the chain called, Neil? It's called a chain. <laughs> what make is it, though? Chain. No, what make is the chain? Have you forgot, haven't you? What? No. What's, no, it, no, what's, no. It, what's it called, then? Roll on. So in this box here, you have seen there with Kev banging the chain off. We're actually, we've actually got a new team sponsor, which is Roll On, and I'm going to chuck that in the, the comments below. We've just had a delivery of, basically they're a new chain company. It's come on board with us. They've, they've sponsored some other teams in the past, and the team, the chains have been tested and everything at the same dyno actually that we use, or that was on this vlog. So we're now just about to fit some of the some of the new chains up onto the Superstock bike and give them a test here, both here and then under the sea as well. I've chucked their logo and stuff in the corner and you can go check them guys out, so... Right guys, I have... <laughs> I'm gonna be honest here. I've put this onboard footage on and for some reason or other the bloody sound hasn't recorded so you're gonna to have to listen to me ramble a little bit instead of hearing the actual noise of the bike but a few reasons why I put it on firstly so you could see <coughs> excuse me how much work the front suspension has to do uh, on a short circuit like this that is quite smooth apart from probably turn seven turn eight you'll see towards the end of the lap as we go uphill I'll, I'll point it out to you but most of it's pretty smooth but yeah you can see how much travel the the forks make on the brakes and even then on on corner exit when when i get back on the throttle again and stuff but um firstly i just wanted to say quite a lot of people have commented in and wanted a vlog like this to do with suspension and stuff so if that's something you'd maybe like to see towards the racing side of the year and then obviously on towards maybe something like the Isle of Man TT if I do get time we could maybe go for another camera angle like this at the TT this is the corner I was just talking about now so this is probably the bumpiest section of the track see there as you just hit the apex it loads up as over the hill um, but yeah if this is something you would like to see going forward and into the, the TT and any other road races that we maybe have or hopefully have if, if they come back um, it was something we could definitely work on doing if I could get some of the, the green light guys to give us the go ahead for some of the other footage and stuff that they get at the road races then um, yeah we can look into doing that but just want to say a massive thanks again for watching this vlog all the other vlogs and if you haven't already please like and subscribe